I know, it's insane, right? <laughs> We've still got Denhomium, Hibiki and Bloom. Welcome to a Bloom's dedication, Bloom's for you video where I get to say thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. And I do go name by name as they appear on my list and as orchids bloom out. The only thing is that I am so grateful for technology because, well, this season has been a bit different for me than previous seasons. I couldn't get the dedications done while the orchid was still in bloom. So I filmed the footage, got all the images documented to then at a later stage still be able to dedicate my blooms and not miss out on a series that I've been doing on my channel from the first bloom that ever appeared appeared saying thank you to people that have commented, to people I can see that have subscribed, to people that show up on the subscriber list for the first time. I put them on that list and then I go down the list one by one by one because I really truly want to reach each and every one of you that I can identify that has interacted with the channel, that continues to support the channel even though it is early days for my channel. So yeah, this is one of those it is another episode of blooms for you there is going to be a lot of name calling <laughs> but good name calling and we're going to see a lot of blooms that have bloomed out but we can appreciate some flashbacks so why am i all giddy about dendrobium <laughs> well <laughs> we are here a few months later and she is still in bloom and then i thought Mm, as we are getting into the place where Hibiki still looks nice, maybe it's getting a little bit old seeing this orchid over and over again, I brought in Chris Netzia Green Light to dedicate these blooms to everybody that is not mentioned in the video today. I want you to know the mere fact that you are watching is a massive support to the channel. And normally I try to keep my intros short, but in these episodes, Ugh, there's not only a lot of housekeeping to do, it just thrills me that I feel as though I am able to talk to you directly and let you know how much you mean to me that you are here. I do not take anybody for granted, but I can't put out, let's say, a Blooms For You marathon video. <laughs> I thought about it, so I'm going in stages and it takes about five to six hours to edit each and every video. And as I mentioned, things haven't quite been right with me this season, so I can't sit around for six hours to do one video. And I don't want to sit there in agony. I want to enjoy every single process of a Blooms For You video, from the filming to the dedication to the editing. So if this is something that you would like to be a part of, please make sure if you've never commented on my videos before, leave a comment, your name goes on the list. Yes, it might take a year before you're called out, but you will be mentioned. If you want to stay private, know that these blooms they bloom for you because I appreciate having you here and your support means just as much as well. If you're on a private account and have been subscribed for a long time, I can't see you. For that reason, you may not have gotten a mention yet. So let me know that as well and I will put you on the list as well. Very many different opportunities to get on that list and eventually to get a bloom for you. And I can see now <laughs> that I'm still five minutes into yapping away at you and we haven't even and started the dedications but for the next six seconds there is that beautiful little intro I've created for the blooms for you episodes would you please hit the like button I would appreciate that so so much also I have a little bit more housekeeping to do once we come on the other side of the intro so I hope that you're still there and if you just want to see the blooms there's always timestamps in the description where you can jump ahead Let's start. I'm going to give you a moment to take a breath. I'll be right back. <laughs> You're still here. Thank you again. Thank you for being here. Alrighty. 
I also have an orchid that I've been cultivating over the years and she is dedicated to orchid ninjas. That is what the members on this channel are called, orchid ninjas. You can become an orchid ninja by hitting the join button, but you won't see the join button unless you've subscribed, something that YouTube has done. I guess it makes sense. It's a pity because if you didn't know otherwise, you wouldn't know a channel has memberships unless you've subscribed. Anyway, it's a YouTube thing. So become an orchid ninja because my fellow Opsus Cornuserbi variety Chatala day she is the orchid ninja orchid because you guys also go a step above and beyond to help and support me and the orchids by subscribing to the monthly memberships it puts a smile on my face that there's people out there that give me that vote of confidence as well and well this orchid also puts a smile on my face because her blooms speak for herself <laughs> currently she's just fading out one bloom and starting to work on her last little bud of the season but i'm going to just show you pictures of when she is in spectacular blooms this is what makes me smile when i see her i think of you when i see you orchid ninjas in my comments and you've got all your little icons on the side the corny survey comes to mind the cheeky little grin on the blooms all of that put together it's just wonderful and i cannot express my appreciation enough as to how thankful i am that you are prepared to help me out on a monthly basis know that i do not take it for granted please please if i don't express myself enough or if i don't say it often enough if i say it too much maybe that is a good thing at least you know that okay so if you want to join the gaggle of orchid ninjas just hit the join button and consider yourself very very welcome to the orchid ninja gaggle now let's go and look some blooms and let's see whose name has come up this is Oncidesa sweet sugar when i looked at these blooms i thought sweet hmm i jumped the list a little bit because this blooming is worth the exception because when i think of sweet i think of two little ladies especially because we've got a little bit of a dancing lady theme going on here so two little ladies they like to dance Anyway, I'm going to stop with the suspense. I want to dedicate the blooming of my Oncidesa Sweet Sugar to Isabella Miriam Jossi and Catherine Elizabeth Jossi, two sisters that I find absolutely delightful, so sweet and so charming. Now, I only know of their existence because of their grandfather, who is an orchid ninja here on the channel. And it is just so nice that I get to share some experiences with the cuties that I call the two princesses. So I hope you understand my connection here. Two sweet princesses combined with the blooms of a sweet sugar. I know. I hope you can see what I did there. <laughs> Isabella Miriam Jossi, Catherine Elizabeth Jossi, this gorgeous, sparkling, sunny, cheerful, dancing lady orchid, she blooms for you, just because I think you are gorgeous, cheerful, sparkly, sunny, and all of the other attributes that little girls have, so I hope that you're doing well say hello to your grandpa for me and know that someone here in spain sends you a massive massive cuddle <laughs> and of course as little princesses do have yourself a beautiful day i hope that all your wishes come true today and maybe you will also get a sweet treat other than just some blooms on a screen and a woman in spain talking away to you <laughs> let me just say i think of you often and i wanted to make this extra special dedication i hope you like yellow <laughs> This is my Jumelia Avorescence. I can't be mad at this orchid because the blooms are so cute, but I didn't get as good a blooming as I did in 2022. She has been growing exceptionally well this year though because I've upped her fertilizer. Anyway, first of all, let me say thank you to Tuyetvo, Pixie, M. Teresa Brugal Puig, and Ben Pham. My Jumelia Arborescence, she blooms for you. Even though we didn't get a massive blooming, they came all a little bit staggered. On some occasions, the nodes will produce a second spike. We missed that this year, unfortunately. But you know what? I think it is because I did go in with a much higher fertilizer concentration, which is evident when you look at the top of her main growth. <laughs> the leaves have kind of grown 30% larger than the ones below. I'm not entirely sure I did the right thing there, but I did say at the beginning, 
beginning of the season i was upping my fertilizer level so here you can see the result anyway the blooms are just adorable i appreciate every single orchid that decides to bloom for me of course we want abundance but hey one bloom four blooms six blooms I am absolutely A-OK -okay with that. And she is growing beautiful new roots. Her little plantlets all around her base are also progressing wonderfully. I couldn't be more pleased. And I'm seeing two new ones on top of that start as well. So I think it was OK to give her more fertilizer. The orchid herself is growing larger, consumes more energy. And with that, mm, I don't think we made a mistake with upping the fertilizer. We'll see what she does next year because when I got this orchid, she was as big as one of her little leads at the bottom. That's the size of her when I got her in 2018. And here we are at the point of filming. It is 2023. It is possible that in 2024, one, maybe <laughs> one of the two leads is going to bloom for us as well. And then we'll start to get more blooms. Fingers crossed that I don't make any mistakes throughout the winter. I adore this orchid. And in her soap dish, <laughs> she's just one of those orchids where you just have to grin every time you walk past when she is in bloom little casper ghosty blooms gorgeous i don't have a fragrance on mine so despite being an angrecoid no fragrance not even at night oh well you can't have it all healthy orchid that is the most important thing blooming orchid is a bonus so thank you so so much to tuyet vo pixie m teresa brugal puig ben fam Jamelia Borescens, she bloomed for you in 2023 i so appreciate your support This orchid was mounted this year. While I'm kind of dreading the care during the winter, I have to say that she is doing so much better on the mount. I can keep her hydrated so that the blooms that she threw out this year could last eight weeks easily. And I got to enjoy them, but what I want to do is dedicate them to Shapiro's dead cat, 314 Pi 177, and Satis Moon. I suppose there's about 45, maybe 50 blooms in there, but because they're so tiny, I'm going to just keep it to three of you to say thank you to all of you for your support of my channel via my Podangas Dactyloteras blooms. This orchid is fun to grow in the summer. It'll be my first winter with her on a mount, so that's going to be interesting. But what I did notice was that because she finally could be hydrated properly, her bloom duration was extended even during the hottest months of the year, where normally I have a humidity of about 12%. This year I had a humidity of 85%, so that could have played a part. Together with the hydration, it probably all worked together. Now, if next year, I get a blooming and it is only 12%. We'll see how long the blooms last because they are just adorable. They are so petite, so dainty, so glassy. It's like Murano glass has been blown by hand and then put on the orchid. It is incredible. It's like glass, crystal, whatever it is that you describe this as. It's translucent, transparent. It's delicate, not fragrant. But oh my goodness, when you look at these blooms, I, I just can't. And being so small, how they are able to withstand conditions and temperatures. Well, this orchid also comes from Kenya so who am I kidding? <laughs> Give us humidity and we're fine. But the other years, her bloom duration didn't last very long, maybe three weeks, four weeks before a spike petered out. And that is when I had 12% humidity. But now I can hydrate her because of my hop filter material. It keeps the hard to water roots <laughs> wetter for much longer. And for me, it's a win. Don't come for me if I start complaining in winter. Right now, it's a win. I love it. So thank you to Shapiro's Dead Cat, 314Pi177 and Satis Moon. Thank you so much for your support on my channel. An orchid that is very close to my heart because she's native to where I am native to, Podangas Dactyloteras. She blooms for you. I was absolutely thrilled to see this orchid back in bloom. She skipped 
2022, just so long as she bloomed for us again. <laughs> right? Jenny Cortez, Min Athene, and Arturo Ortiz Perez. This is Lelia Brad Day, a ridiculous Lelia. A group of orchids that I just go gaga over. <laughs> so when she first bloomed in 2021, I was like, yay, we're going to see you every year. And then when she didn't bloom in 2022, I was like, why? What's changed? Why aren't you blooming this year? And here we are in 2023, and she bloomed, and I was back to yay. Normally, ridiculous Lelias don't send me on a roller coaster ride once they are established. Yes, that's a big disclaimer. They have to be established. Otherwise, I'm like a helicopter mom over them, making sure that they live. I find them hard to come by now. But hey, broad day, look at this yellow. You know, like the buttercups that you find in the fields. That's what this yellow reminds me of. In the springtime, you get all these little yellow blooms popping up amongst the daisies. They're a little bit longer than the daisies and bright, bright yellow. In German, we call them Butterblume, which would translate to butterflower. So when I say buttercup, I am just assuming that is what they're called in English. But this is what these blooms remind me of. Not fragrant, but then most ridiculous lelias are not fragrant. They don't need it. In their terrain where they have to survive and overcome all kinds of odds, the pollinators are just attracted by the fact that there is color other than granite and rock and dried up grasses. <laughs> So it's like, oh, a bloom, let's go. <laughs> they don't need a fragrance. <laughs> so Jenny Cortez, Mina Thin, and Arturo Ortiz Perez. It is my absolute pleasure and a massive gratitude in my heart that I dedicate the blooms of my Lelia Broad Day to you to say thank you so much for your support on my channel. It is greatly appreciated. Very, very proud, very, very thrilled to have these blooms to dedicate to DJ and Mojo Jojo Juniper. This is Caticlia Atro Walker, and this is the first time that we get to appreciate her blooms because first time bloomer, always so much fun. But not only that, she's not mislabeled. After five years of care since she arrived in my collection in 2018, here we are, not mislabeled, and it is perfection in my eyes. I cannot tell you much about the bloom duration because I'm going to be documenting and dedicating these blooms before they fade, of course. But her parents being in Cyclia cordigera and Catlia walkeriana, I'm expecting a bloom duration of approximately three weeks. The temperatures aren't that high anymore, so there's not really that much of a threat out there that could take the blooms out. But let me tell you, DJ and Mojo Jojo Juniper, her fragrance is divine. Both her parents are highly fragrant, so thankfully, in this case of a first-time bloomer, she has brought her fragrance out right from the get-go. I don't have to wait another season, and she smells of, let me say, very, very sweet vanilla with a hint of rose, but it is extremely sweet and very strong. <laughs> I have other orchids in bloom in the blooming alley right now. They are fragrant as well, and these blooms are much smaller than those other blooms, but this one takes the cake. It pushes the other fragrance out of the park. So if you're looking for a nice, fragrant orchid that isn't a space hog, let me recommend to you Caticlia Atro Walker, because oh my goodness, I am I'm totally enchanted by her. Thank you, DJ and Mojo Jojo Juniper, for your support on my channel. It gives me great pleasure to dedicate the first blooming, the first two blooms ever on the patio of my Caticlia Atro Walker to you. I appreciate your support and I really hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Thank you for being here. As I move into fall and then, oh, the dreaded winter, seeing what has been blooming in my collection, considering the circumstances they had to deal with from the previous winter, and they still did what they did, it gives me hope as I move forward that we are going to be okay. Now, I do not have a crystal ball. I do not know what the next winter is going to bring. We are going to ride out the challenge together and I will document what's going on. I am not a boohoo channel. And maybe I should have said this in the intro if you're still here. Well, you will now find out. I am not a boohoo woe is me channel. I hate losing orchids, but I do want to express that losing orchids has been a thing with me for the past two years 
because I do not supplement with lights, nor do I supplement with heat or heat mats. The cost of the utilities is just too high. There are other needs that need to be met before I do that for my orchids. So whatever we saw in bloom this time around, I am hoping that we still have these orchids come 2024 in the collection. Needless to say, the journey will be documented. And if it was a mistake on my part, this is a long disclaimer. If it was a mistake on my part, I will let you know. If it was a mistake on the part of the conditions that I couldn't change because circumstances are what they are, I will let you know. But never will I make an excuse. It is always an explanation. I really need you to know that. It is important to me that I'm not here making excuses. It'll just be, this is what happened. And I can only cope with whatever I'm going to be facing in the coming months leading up to hopefully mid-April, end of April, if I can be realistic about it. And you can hear me say what I need to say without thinking I'm fishing for sympathy, okay? Not many people watch videos to the end. Let me just say, if you did watch to the end, now you know. And you may hear me repeating it now throughout the season because I do not ever want to come across as boohoo, woe is me, pity party, none of that. Very realistic about what's coming up and I just want to make it very clear, I don't like what's coming up whatsoever. Not only do I struggle as a human being because of the conditions during the winter, but I also struggle because I can't do any better for my orchids. And usually, as you can possibly hear, the tone in my voice changes because I become very matter of fact considering the circumstances, if you can't change it, do the best you can, but I can't wallow in self-pity. I don't want that on my channel. So those are my goals for the winter. Bring you the facts, tell you how it is, without giving the impression that everybody has to get their violins out. <laughs> Anyway, I want you to know that I appreciate you for still sticking around to the end of this video. My Hibiki and my Chrysnetia green light, which is in spike on three fans. This is the first time. She could be so much more vigorous. But again, the conditions are such in my climate. She is not as vigorous as she could be. But the fact that we've got three fans and blooms with two darling little blooms on each of them. Yes, I'm grateful for that. And these orchids, they bloom for you, for watching, for supporting, for commenting, even though your name was not mentioned today. Know that I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.